Hey everyone, it's Joel from the Fun Pimps, and we are here with uh, Alpha 16 Q&A with Mad Mole, Volume 10. Uh, Guppy Cur, breadcrumbs. Are they to replace the feral GPS system or enhance it? I would say enhance it. Um, Doombringer. Hey Mad Mole, question. In your opinion, will sleepers make it into A16? I am happy for a percentage chance-based answer. Um, yes, they will make it. We already have them. Uh, the tools are just about are working. They're going through an improvement phase and then Rick's going to set up all the spawn triggers and get to it. So I believe, you know, we're really close to having having the system workable so that, you know, Rick can go through the prefabs and, um, you know, set everything up and then we'll have them. So then it's just a matter of tuning and testing and bug fixing for that particular feature. Um, RS Claymore, just wondering, will we ever see any seasonal events in the game to make it more fun? Like all the zombies drop candy during Halloween time or all the eggs have different colors during Easter. I, would say no on that particular feature. Um, Maj, my, my, my. hey Mad Mole, from 14 to 15, the number of Zs active during a horde was turned down to eight. You explained in the past that this was done for the benefit of everyone on a server getting a horde and other performance issues. Some of those hordes, or some of those issues, aren't applicable in single player games. Will we ever see an option in the menu to increase the number of max alive Z's during a horde on a single player game. I, I don't really know. I mean, it's not done. It's everything's revolving and a work in progress. Um, our goal is to get more than eight. That was just, um, that was just a number that was based on what we knew worked, you know, having about 60, 64 zombies alive at one time that any particular server could handle. So we divided that by the number of players we support, which is eight. And that's how we come up with that magic number. So um, in theory, you know, you could get 60 some zombies by yourself, but you know, that would take a lot of balancing work. And, you know, bear in mind, this is the first version of the system, you know, in the future, it could change and you know we've got a lot of optimizing we could do and we could probably bump that number to double what it is at some point hopefully so you know either that or we'd have to you know come up with a way to dynamically increase the decrease you know the the, the difficulty of the zombie and, and just throw more numbers at you i guess you know yeah it's not it's it's something we want to improve, that's for sure. So moving on, um, Silas or Sills. I wanted to ask a follow-up question to distant POIs. I have noticed in the past games like Elder Scrolls Four that distant light areas look dark and will not light up until I get close. Since you're now working on distant POIs, I wanted to know if that is possible. So my question is, can light from things like street lamps and lighted other POIs appear lit. Um, you know, I, I don't know yet. <laughs> Probably, I'm gonna say no, just because our lights are real and they're not fake baked. So, you know, it's really hard to, it could probably be pretty costly rendering a ton of lights off in the distance. I don't know yet though. So it's kind of, I imagine, you know, until the chunk's loaded and then, just, then you're gonna see light but you're definitely, I probably doubt you're, we're going to have, it all depends. I mean, you know, you might be able to mod it out so that that's possible, but you know, it's going to affect your frame rate and stuff, but you know, I guess we'll wait and see, but I think until we get a, right now, the distant LED models don't have, they don't have light lights in them and they don't have bones and all the stuff that normal blocks do. So I don't see that working, honestly. Um, Lion's Den, I was wondering if you have plans for a type of pontoon that we can place on water and build on it 
to make a dock and or bridge. Pontoons could be wood barrels or metal or even plastic. Even one of those materials would be nice. Um, maybe. Um, we need to get water better first and get a little further down the road, and then we'll we're gonna you know really discuss where where we're gonna go with with water. Um, but yeah, the, the plan is to eventually get um, boats and some kind of watercraft. So more news on that down the road. Um, Lord Zarfax, how about a resource detector, like a metal detector works? That's something we've talked about. Um, I think that would be nice, but the fact that you need one shows a design flaw to me. And I think the current distribution of ore is not what I had wanted, you know, something gas put together and nothing against gas. I mean, he has to work within the limits of XML. So there's only so much you can do. And I just think it needs, it needs tuning and code to get it how I envision it to be to where you can, you know, find, you know, a decent amount of ore without, you know, a player shouldn't have to sit there for three hours digging to get, to finally find that one ore that he wants. I mean, that's just, that was my experience. And then I didn't have enough of it. And there's not enough, you know, there's not enough ore to make, you know, bullets viable in my opinion. And well, maybe I was just unlucky, but, you know, playing by myself, it was kind of like, you know, I don't know, it was just impossible to get enough gunpowder and stuff. So, I want to see um, the distribution improve and, and the way you find metal. But yeah, I mean, that's a great idea. I just don't, but that's, you know, that's, that's just a band aid to a bigger problem. And the problem is there's just not enough resources distributed in a way that the players can find them. And that's a result of, you know, caves not being what they could be and, and the ore distribution being too much in one area and not enough in the dead zones. So I think we just need more of that. I'd like to see respawning resources on the surface so those rocks can respawn. So if you don't want to be a miner, you don't have to be a miner, that kind of thing. You can just get what you need off of the rocks on the surface. And I think that, you know, it works for the other survival games. I know it would work for us. Maybe it wouldn't be the mining solution. And, and if you're the guy who really wants tons of stuff. Yeah. You're going to have to go underground and get it. But if you just want a little here and there, you know, and you're willing to travel to get it, I think that's, that should be a viable way to get it too, if you can find those things. But anyway, um, that's just a balance point. Captain laser pants. Hey man, mole loving the game. Thank you. I really like the idea of having power tools for late game as opposed to simple picks and shovels, but I know firsthand the unpleasantness and ineffectiveness of hitting a big rock while using an auger. Well, what are your thoughts on making the auger strictly dirt, sand, gravel tool and having a gasoline powered jackhammer or stone for concrete? Um, yeah, um, that's not a bad idea. I mean, it's, it's another, it's another tool you got to find and maintain and stuff um, and switch to, you know, it's kind of like, eh, I don't know. I don't like the gameplay of having to switch tools frequently when I'm mining. I just want to go in there and wreck everything and get everything and get out and get on with my building projects. So it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's cool, but you know, we have to think about that and, and the, the tools, how often do you have to switch tools? I mean, if, if it was one big pocket of stuff you use the jackhammer for, that might be kind of cool. And then when you you have other areas where you're going to use that tool, you know, but I don't know, maybe we'll have NPC someday digging everything for you. So I, I can do what I want. Cause I, I used to like mining, but after so many hours mining, I just want to build cool stuff and, 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 and loot and kill zombies and do more engaging activities myself. I mean, I know some people love mining and I don't, and I like, I like it too, but I think I've, 
I've stared at enough walls up close to my face long enough that I, I don't I don't really desire to do that anymore. So it's kind of like I think I think there there needs to be other other ways of getting resources besides the player grinding. I mean I think that's great for early game, and I think it's part of it. But later on, I'd like to see you know you know either like oil pumps and rock quarries and it's just a big machine that you put fuel in and you can guard it and maintain it and, and it just cranks out free resources so you don't have to dig the entire world out to have to you know there needs to be respawning resources that way there's an endless supply of building materials and and not eventually there's craters everywhere from all the damn mines you dug up in the game and then you gotta deal with the hat no i don't know i think there's i think digging is cool but there's better there's there should be better end game solutions to getting resources like NPCs that it that are getting resources for you and equipment large equipment that you use science get, give science skills something interesting to, to expand to so that you can build these big contraptions that help you get resources or automatically farm for you and that's where I think we need to go but um, that might be the next game too I don't know if seven days will ever see any of these topics but that's that's those are these are my opinions so i can't you know unless we're actually working on something i can't really say hey this is what we're going to do because until the whole team works on it and we just and we finalize a, a good design and we're actually doing it you know who knows what what what's actually going to happen uh, stinger wolf hey mad mullen team really enjoy the game and you're post is way too long so i'm not reading it i'm sorry guy i'll try do you have any simple question i can answer dogs could you reintroduce the dog pack howl this is less about giving the players a chance to find cover as is injecting more fear excitement into the game um i didn't know we lost the dog howl so if you can verify that Dogs don't howl anymore. Um, please send Roland a message and have him contact me and we will put in a ticket for it and make sure that that they do howl again. Or unless you're talking about the ambient howls in the background, which I think I, I've heard those. I don't know. Yeah, if there's a bug, let us know and we'll fix it. There should They should still howl. Um, Alf, but try and keep your, you guys, you got to keep your questions short. I'm not going to read a you know, whole page here. Um, is it possible ability to add in simple calls, expressions, gestures, such as whistle? Yeah, everything's possible, but I just don't think those are needed right now. I think we're, you know, we're not really, um, you know, you guys can discord, you can team speak, you can talk to each other. Um, I just don't see how that fits our game really right now. Um, but you know, you don't want you to press the V button instead of punching your friend. I don't know. You know, you can press V to talk. So, um, that's my solution for that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I'm not saying no to this, but until we're on on the PvP and I don't I don't know if that's even needed yet. So I mean, we're still focusing on base features like, you know, sleepers and AI and stuff like that. I think it's more important. Um Slicks Girl, will the block overhaul for A16 include a prevention for water breaking through one deep blocks? No, the block overhaul doesn't have anything to do with water. Water is water, blocks are blocks. So it's two different systems and we're not touching water probably until alpha 17 or 18. But sometime we want to redo the water so that it's it works much better. Hey Mad Mole, Glimpsy wants to know any chance there's going to be an overhaul of the melee to include different weapon styles, animations, and effects. Um, there's yeah, I think we're, we're planning power attacks so you can press and hold, you know, left mouse button and 
you're going to use a ton of stamina and you're going to put everything into it and it'll have a different animation than the normal quick slashes that we have. And, um, you know, we'd like to do potentially a block or knockback type thing. So yeah, there's, we've got some stuff we want to do, but I don't, it's not, not on the plate right now. Um, Crunch O'Malley. Stack sizes. Hey, Mad Mole, thanks for your team for making such an awesome game. I have now bought 10 copies for others to help grow the base and keep it going and have over 850 hours played. Wow, awesome. You're very generous. Um, any chance stack sizes for all of the base building materials could be normalized the same with stacks to 5K, but stone and everything else are still capped at 1,000. Oh, I don't know. You better pester gas about that. Um, maybe he's trying to simulate weight a little bit. So I guess, uh, that's something to consider. So I'm not sure why the stat, but that's, you know, easily moddable, but yeah, I, I understand if you don't want to mod too. I think, yeah, I don't know what my thoughts are on that. Actually, I'd have to really sit down and think about it, but, um, I'm a fan of bigger stacks, but then again, if they're too big, there's also something that feels rewarding about having a chest full of, you know, 20 stacks of wood. And if the stacks are too big, there's, you're never going to have a full chest. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. So it's kind of like, and there is like, really, how much crap can this guy carry? You know, so I don't know. You know, that's something we'll have to talk about. Uh, TSBX, same Mad Mole with the upcoming new block placement system. Any shape, any texture, how will that affect the block ID limitation? Uh, also, guys, when this is done, there's no such thing as a block anymore. You're not going to need blocks. Blocks are going to be for special shapes like guard railings and stuff that has a skin texture that wouldn't look good with with a tiling texture on it like um just a you know there's a few specific things that would do that otherwise i mean the way i see it working and it's looking like you guys aren't even going to get the new shape system for alpha 16 i mean we're just we're just trying to polish up painting and electricity and it's and get every block in the game converted to a new shape and you know later on allow a menu to access these shapes but eventually the way i envision it and i think the guys kind of agree with me that it would be best to have a material upgrade path so wood goes to reinforced wood um reinforced wood goes to reinforced wood metal that goes on to scrap iron and reinforced scrap iron and then concrete and then your steel and so on and so forth and then what that does is you need one base block that has that upgrade path. So let's say it's a cube, for example, but it's not a cube. It's just a block. And then there's a shape property and that shape can be whatever you want. So you go from uh, cube to ramp to wedge 60 to arch or whatever you want. And that's just a property of that block that's placed in that world. It's not a block ID. It's not ramp wedge 60 block with uh, green shingles and blue uh, siding. We don't, we're not gonna have that crap anymore. Thousands of blocks are getting nuked and we're, there's probably gonna be a, just a handful of block entries. I mean, really, I mean, there's probably more than I think there is, but at the same time, all these little variants are gonna go by, they're gonna get kicked to the curb and be out of here and, quit, and clean up blocks XML. And so there'll be a material upgrade path there will be a shape property to a block and the material will dictate the, you know, the hit points and what it's made of. And basically the shape is just, you know, is it a ramp? Is it a cube? Is it an arch? Is it a curved surface? What is it? And that doesn't really matter. And you can make any, any shape you want and then paint it, whatever, however you want. And that's going to, create millions of blocks without having millions of block entries. So hopefully the, you know, the modding block, you guys won't even care about how many spare blocks there are in the blocks XML because you'll be able to make 
what you want when you want in the in the prefab that you're working on and there's not going to be a need for all these extra block IDs. So, um, Val Barsa. Hey, Mad Mullen Fun Pimps. Love your work and dedication to the game. Personally have 2,069 hours logged and still dragging more and more friends into the game with me. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you. Love you guys' uh, dedication to playing the game. So, uh, my question is, will players, player characters eventually be able to lie flat and go prone. Uh, it's more of a PvP thing. And when we have a better stealth system kind of thing, I mean, it, I can see it working for single player and everything too, and, and PvE. Um, but yeah, it's, it's maybe possible. We need to get... We need to get all the new... Uh, animations in and, and see how much work that takes for third person anims and then go from there you know but it's it's possible but i'm not sure that's something we really want to do yet um tranquitas hey man mole love you the youtube videos and the electricity update thank you question have you thought about doing a more realistic nutrition system like having two food status bars instead of one, one for proteins, one for vitamins, something like that. Uh, I think that's too complicated. You know, the more the more we go down the road of designing games and hearing the feedback from the players, the more we just just kind of come to the conclusion that you know simple is always best. You know, everybody thinks having more and more is better, but it's really not. It's, it's how does it communicate and how well does the, uh, does it play and is it really necessary for that extra information and, and how, how is it learned and how easy is it learned? Is it, is it something that they, that they can learn and then translate that to another system in the game so that they're not relearning new rules and new systems every time they change items or do want to do something else. So, you know, it's kind of like we do want to overhaul food. That's on the table yet, but I don't see having yet another food bar for that. I mean, I don't know. I just think that's that's borderline health simulator instead of survival simulator. So that's kind of where, where, what I think. Um, you're a Damus. What's a Damus? No, you're a Damus. No, you're a Damus. Screw you, Damus. No, I don't know what a, you're Adamus? Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Anyway, people in their name. Oh, there it is. I got it right in the first place. You're a Damus. Uh, that was fun. Um, now that texture painting is on the way, is there any way that feature can be expanded to allow us to change the specularity with the brush as well? Mainly to get a wet look when needed. Nope, you get the textures we make. If you want to edit the specular channels of that texture, feel free to edit, edit TA underscore opaque underscore S and you will get the results you want. Uh, thread. The game currently uses DirectX 9, I believe. Will 11 be implemented in the future? This will allow way higher frame rates. And it, uh, the game should already use DirectX 11 dynamically if you have DirectX 11. As far as I know, I could be wrong. Um, it uses 9 for people who have 9 and don't have 11. I, th I think. I could be wrong, though. So, anyway. Ferguson, hello, Mad Mole. My question is, can we have UMA zombies in random hordes and screamer hordes in blood moon hordes? I'm on day 145, never saw a screamer zombie coming to a blood moon horde. No, I mean, we designed it that way. We thought that would be too much. And you know how it could break the eight zombie rule that we don't want to do. We saw everybody's getting crappy frame rate. I mean, that's just... Uh, in my opinion, throwing a screamer at you when you've already got a horde is like adding insult to injury. So I mean, it's just too much. So we want to like keep the keep the game the frame rate high and 
Um, and those are two separate events, but you know, we've got some stuff coming to spice up Horde Night, so I, I doubt you're gonna want, you're not gonna want this when, when we get through with you, so that's my opinion. Alexander, with the advent of silver, gold, and diamonds, is it possible we might get a treasure block, a pile of loot basically that we can make our vault rooms feel like a dragon's hoard? So if we could get a pile of money block, I know these are more decorated, but I feel it would go well with the Duke's Casino. Uh, you know, I'll kick that around and we'll see. Um, I think, you know, I think I know what you want. Um, it's now that we've got um, shapes, a lot more is possible, but you know, bear in mind the fidelity of shapes is pretty limited. So I, I don't know, it seems like that that would be a custom skinned object that was is kind of. We'll see how it goes. If we could get texture streaming going, you know, more stuff's possible. But yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Lucky Star, Low Man Mulder is a 66 mg limit on the dot map file for random world gen. Only so much map can be uncovered when old stuff gets covered back up. Will we ever see that limit lifted so we can uncover more of the map? Are you saying you traveled to certain areas and the map didn't generate? Uh, I would put that in the bug forum. And this is a question for the Ask Kenyahu forum because I don't know anything about random gen. I don't know. <laughs> I know very little about it or not. An I know enough but I don't know enough, if that makes sense. So ask Robert, that's the best I can say there to get an accurate answer. Uh, meat Shield, hey Mad Mole, any chance we can get object inheritance for recipe ingredients? For example, if I create new types of meat that extended raw meat, each could be used in place of the raw meat ingredient. So when I create meat stew from potato, corn, bottled water, and any of the new meats like raw meat chicken, this would allow new specialized recipes like fried chicken and raw meat chicken, animal fat, and cornmeal, which is delicious. Um, uh, we might go as far as creating white meat and red meat and call it a day, you know, I'm not, and fish maybe at some point, we'll see. Um, I don't know. We'll have to talk about it. We have some changes to food that we want to do, so we'll get there when we get there. Bad Ash. I'm good Ash. I'm bad Ash. Hey, Mad Mole. When will you change the weapon rocking when aiming? I do not think that there is no one rocking their weapon that way when shooting. LOL. Oh, I don't know. Have you ever aim down a, the barrel at a gun at a, at a living being <laughs> or zombie. Uh, I think people might shake a little bit, but uh, that's just me. Um, I don't know. I don't think it, I, I think almost all games do that. I think there's always a little bit of sway when you, when you zoom in and try to aim, but uh, maybe that's crosshair sway and not, and it could be an animation thing you're talking about that shakes when you get too far away from center of the world. I know we've had that bug, so I don't really know for sure, but you know, we want to improve gunplay and visuals. I mean, so it's possible that we might fix what you're talking about in the future, but I don't know for sure. Cause it's kind of, kind of vague. Um, CHGs. Great game and waiting in anticipation for A16. GG's. Something that has been bugging me for the longest time in this game is that some crafting components like oil and bellows are only used in one crafting recipe each. Could they get more recipe uses as well? Hmm. That is a good point. Um. 
I'll have to, we'd have, you know, <laughs> that takes some deep thought and you guys don't have time to listen to the silence here. So I'm going to just say maybe and moving on. Sir J, 1948. Is that the year you were born? Dude, you're, you're, you're an old timer if that's true. Um, I love, I really love immersive games and the more hardcore the better. So I want to ask if you thought about having an option that would remove the world map and instead added to the game crafting recipe for a blank map and colorful pencils so that the player could draw their own map. Ah, no, it's just too much work. I mean, who wants to do that? I mean, no offense, guy, but I don't want to draw a map. I don't, I mean, I'm a good artist and my map would suck. You know how hard it is to draw a real map? I mean, I just don't think that's something most players would enjoy and it would be a lot of work and there would be a lot of people raging about that change in my opinion. So uh, people, I think, you know, the map's done and it is what it is. Guys, we're, I mean, we're not done with the game, but don't expect major changes for stuff that works just fine and we're not doing it. I mean, we got to finish the game and get on with the next thing. Um, Tessac. And by, and when I say finish the game and get on with the next thing, you know, I mean, in the next year or two, <laughs> I can see, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, I can see this, this year getting real close to gold and then a whole other year for, for DLCs. So that's kind of where we're at right now and, and probably early pre-production of, of the next title sometime next year, I hope, you know, while we're doing DLCs, we'll be working on the next, the next games engine major engine framework changes and all that kind of stuff so it's a big long process so um tessac can we get a function to unload our entire backpack into a container at once kind of like the take all but in reverse i think so that's if we can find room on the hud i think that would be pretty cool um Space Piggyo, I have asked this before, so why are you asking it again? Oh, you never got a reply. Sorry, dude. Uh, can we get another timer on the forge for smelting ore? We have one for fuel, and we have timers for items we craft in the forge, but in the smelting dialog box, it does not have a timer. Hmm, maybe. I'll have to talk to, you know... Lathan and uh, Robert about that. So, Horst, Seven Day Hordes. Could Seven Day Hordes get a more tactical zombie order in which they spawn overnight? So, for example, first the cops to shoot holes in the base, second Zs that fit through small one by one holes like dogs and spiders, and then strong feral football players to widen gaps and defenses, keep the pressure up. And in the end, the normal Z's to flood a base. I, maybe, I mean, I don't, I think it's 100% random right now. We don't really, but we do have waves. So I'm not sure if more waves can be introduced, but it seems possible. Um, I'd have to talk to Gaz about that, but it sounds like a good idea. Um, creator, creator, as... The feature list tightens up. Can you confirm any specific situations which zombie AI will navigate better in Alpha 16? Situations where it can't reach you now include underground, on slits, cross broken bridge, above broken stairs, ladders with hatches, walls with odd shaped gaps. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Joe's been working on sleepers and he did animal stuff before that. So... Currently, in, in no situation will it be better than Alpha 15 as far as navigation goes, to my knowledge. But that doesn't mean there won't be some improvements. I mean, we're supposed to do the, maybe get to the Chrome system yet. So um, depends how many bugs there are with other systems and how long all that takes. So uh, we'll keep you guys posted. 
Dividing by zero. Mammal, first off, thanks for the time in the game. Can we make Dukes a non-inventory item and instead stored number value? Uh, so, uh, you know, but then what's the, I don't know, maybe we've talked about that. I'm not sure, you know, the pros and cons, you know, someone could steal your money. So, um, I don't know. I guess it depends on how we want the game to play, but I think there's there's a thrill to the risk of losing your money, you know, when you're taking it somewhere, if you get killed, you know, you want to get your stuff back and, and some of your stuff is that money. So I think it's kind of realistic to leave it alone. That's my opinion. So synthetic Messiah, hey, magnificent mole, that's a first. And the rest of you awesome fun pimps, will bears be able to use the zip lines? No, they will not. I Bane, hi Mad Mole, what will the key objectives for, well, what will be the key objectives for the beta phase? Um, well, you know, obviously you've got to get through alpha first. Alpha means feature complete. You know, and beta is to optimize and get all the bugs out. So I guess key objectives would be what I just said. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I will see you guys soon.